Hi, hello, good afternoon, good morning, whatever time you're watching this. When will I escape the construction noises? If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name's Charlotte. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I appreciate you. Today, I thought it might be nice to do a little everyday makeup tutorial, show you how I do my makeup, you know, just do a little chatty get ready with me. It's been a while since I've done a makeup video and I have had just a couple of requests for like what I do, what my routine is, my everyday. It's probably changed since I've done my last one. Some things are slightly different. Some things are very much still the same but I thought it might be nice if we could just get together one-on-one -on -one, persevere despite all that construction noise outside my hair is really really greasy so I apologize for that I'm gonna list all the products I use in the description box I'm by absolutely no means a makeup artist like makeup specific content creator I just like what I do on my face and I know it works. I think there's a slight skin to moving on, so I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm just gonna talk you through what I did for my eyebrows because clearly I've done them off camera. Um, so I use, if I can open it, I use a very, very grotty bar of Pears soap with a bit of setting spray and a spoolie. This is like one of the only things that's ever worked for my eyebrows um, when they're not laminated. Um, it's a little bit risky in the sun. You're gonna see all my very well-loved products. First step, I try to do this almost every day, it's almost run out, is the Refi Primer. I really wanted to try this, I'm a bit of a ride or die Bobbi Brown fan, but this is hydrating as well. I like to rub it in a bit as well, just to get it all over. I do find that while the applicator is like a nice gimmick, it doesn't really get very well like into these areas. So you do have to rub it on a bit. You don't need a huge amount and it's very hydrating. I've already prepped my face this morning with like moisturizer and SPF. I usually on a weekday will just do SPF rather than moisturizer because if I'm honest, I don't have time to wait for everything to sink into my skin properly. So I'll do SPF and then a primer if I feel like my skin needs it. I do it most days. I do like this. Would I rebuy it? Yes, I think it's good value. I think it's a nice lightweight hydrating primer and I do think it does help with the longevity of my makeup. This is probably the second favorite primer I've ever tried following the Bobbi Brown vitamin face base. For base, I'm enjoying a little bit more coverage um, just where I'm having a wee bit of a purge from my retinol. So <laughs> this is where my routine hasn't changed very much. This is the Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer in the shade C10. This is like the perfect shade match for me. I just put this a bit of everywhere. I went out in the sun the other day without any SPF and you can see my forehead's a lot darker than the rest of my face. Uh, next is the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturiser. This is the shade Mykonos. I shade match this myself. If you don't use the website foundation.com, you should. I just dab like a really small amount of this on my face. I tried to avoid the under eye area and that was probably a bit too much on my face, but oh well. Refi double ended brush. I do really like the look of like full coverage matte glam, especially when it's like completely, you know, like blemish free. But I think there's obviously a big difference between how that looks on camera um, compared to how that looks in real life. And I think it's not very forgiving for my skin texture. Blemishes are gonna show through and I'm not super precious about that. And what you probably should do with the NARS is put it on the back of your hand and work it into the brush first. And that just like primes the brush, but this is somewhat realistic every day. And I'd love to do that. I just forget to a lot of the time. If you've been around for a while, you'll remember when I bought this. This is the Kevin Kwan Sensual Skin Enhancer in the shade SX10, another shade match product with foundation. Really proud of myself for this because this was expensive. And if you watched any of my videos last year, you know, there's not a lot of product in here and I'm probably not even halfway through. This is a great multi-use product and I did buy this with the intention of simplifying the rest of my routine. It is the kind of hero product that I would say if you want to just carry one thing around, two things around, this would be the one. It's definitely hard to get used to though. It's a little bit of a learning curve product. It was for me anyway. So for this, I like to take a little dab, literally a very minor amount, and I like to warm it up on the back of my hand. You don't need as much as you think. It's very, very, very thick. Very much your skin, but better. I got this with a gift voucher actually. So even though it was a lot, I didn't spend all my own money on it. I paid an extra 10 pounds towards it, I think. And I will say lasting power. Yeah, definitely worked. So once that's warmed up on your finger, I'm gonna just go under my eyes. I should use a color corrector, but I've never really quite got the hang of them. And I know it looks like I've blended it out a lot, but I'm not, I've just like placed it on top and I'm gonna let it sit for like five minutes. 
with the excess I'm just gonna go around on some of the little more red blemishes on my face just pat like around them if it's like active don't put any product on it like if you've just picked it i'd go a little bit around my nose just a teeny bit because it can get quite dry so question for the makeup community i have had my eye forever like forever even when i was buying this on the hd is it makeup hd hd forever makeup forever makeup forever makeup forever they do this palette that's like a case that has everything you could possibly need in it but it's like 100 pounds or 90 pounds or something i'll put an image of it on the screen because i'm really about like simplifying my makeup if i could just take one thing around i would but the problem is i like wearing a lot of makeup i like variety in my products i've been thinking about getting this forever really scared because there's no makeup forever counters near me I don't think and I wouldn't know what shades to get and also you don't know the formulation of the product and recently they've obviously done a lot of brand activations because loads of influencers I really like and really follow them for their makeup have been posting them using this case and I know I'm not a makeup influencer but I was kind of like damn I wish I wish I could have got sent one to try it out um and I do generally like trust a lot of these influencers that I follow and understand that I like have my own autonomy like no one's forcing me to buy anything if I buy this product after doing my research I don't like it. it's not the influencers fault but because so many people I saw it on so many pages I'm like obviously everyone's been paid to do an ad on it I want to wait like six months and see when people have done like full reviews of it but yeah if anyone's got that my question is do you like it is it worth it most importantly are the pans refillable I don't know if they are you can use this Kevin Aquan product with a brush if you prefer I just prefer using my hands at the moment we've let the concealer sit so I'm gonna pat it very gently in with my fingers and I always like to put a bit at the bridge of my nose because I have a little bit of discoloration there and pat out any creases. I am just not the person to pursue having perfect under eyes. I spent a long time trying to find concealer combos that work for me, uh, powder combos that work for me. I go through varying stages of looking fairly tired and then not looking very tired. I will say since I've stopped using Grande Lash, and put on a little bit of weight. The orbital fat loss has got better because I do think I definitely lost volume under my eyes. I'm happy with that being my under eyes. It's all an angles game, isn't it? Looks, it looks shiny now. Look not great there, look fine there, who cares? If I was doing like a full beat or wanted like a really nice bright under eye, I really like the, where is it? Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. This is a very bright shade for me. Um, I don't actually know what shade it is. Nope, sorry. It used to have the shade on the bottom, but it didn't say. This is a very bright shade for me. I just do like a teeny, teeny dab, let it sit, and then work it out. And it's really, really nice and brightening, but it's a bit much for every day, I think. I was using it every day, but I'm kind of like out of that phase at the moment. You know, you just cycle through makeup, don't you? Found my way back to my favorite contour. God knows why I ever abandoned her for as long as I did. The Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. This is worth the money in my opinion. I love the colour, I love the blend. Perfect mix of a contour bronzer. Two products, one stone. I get medium deep. Real Techniques, face brush, stubby one. I'll just have to blend with the fabulous sounds. Construction in the background for a moment, apologies. Just a like patting motion rather than a dragging motion. I know I use the dragging motion on my forehead, but there's less product up there, like in terms of foundation and concealer. Everyone's placement for these kinds of things is different, but I like to do just under the hollow of my cheek, just here. You can see it on this side, that's probably a little bit high up to be honest. And then I like to do across the temple and into the eyelid, just to give my eyelids like a bit of warmth. I know that sounds absolutely mad, like I've just made it up, but I think it just gives a bit of shape. Like you can see here, it like creates an indent, which gives you like more pronounced cheekbones. I really like this Charlotte Tilbury product to me because I feel like I can't overdo it. I mean, there's definitely times where I've over bronzed my face, but it never goes muddy. It always just blends out to like a really nice bronzy contour shade. I always blend into the hairline as much as I can. I don't tend to put any product along my jaw unless I'm wearing a hair back, like a slick back. Uh, and then I, I still blend all my foundation and concealer down onto my neck. But I do always do just like a little V shape 
under my chin just to create a bit more shadow and I do just like blend that out and down a little bit. I'm quite lucky that my face is usually the same colour as my neck for the most part that is unless I start getting really tan in the summer and then it's definitely not. I'm unfortunately very, very prone to a sunglasses tan and I also have some natural moles right on the bridge of my nose, which makes my nose look really, really dark. So I always just do a little bit of concealer at the top there and I'm very liberal with the Factor 50 in that area. This is all I do for a little bit of nose contour just underneath. So we haven't set the under eyes yet and we won't for a minute, but all the while just keep coming back and blending out those creases because your concealer will start to settle under your eyes. I mean, creases happen, you know, I've got creases under my eyes, but I don't want to set my powder into them. Changed my blush combo recently and I'm really enjoying it. I've been getting loads and loads of compliments on my blush. So I was using P. Louise Sunkiss Mist and like a tan nudie colour bronzer over the top. So very peachy, very like in line with my skin tone, I think just from a tonal perspective, it wasn't a very obvious blush. And I've reverted back to Cloud Paint by Glossier. This is the colour Storm. I've had this for five, six years and we're only kind of just reaching the end. Still got loads left though. When I tell you a smudge on the back of my hand, like that much, that's even still quite a lot. I'm gonna get the side of this Refi brush and literally just like work it into the brush, like really, work it in so there's like nothing left on it so that's the back of my hand it's all in the brush i like a temple blush placement i used to do it really high up onto my temple i'm trying to come more into the apples so it looks a bit more natural i really struggle with getting that like white strip of concealer and then your blush so i try to be as blended as possible work in layers because that looks like it's not done a lot which is fine so we'll go back in because it's really easy to overdo it with this blush I know on camera it's looking a little bit sunburnt, but remember blush is like always the first thing to go. I do just a tiny bit on my nose and let's go back under the eyes. Powder time, I'm really just in like a simple powdering moment. I used to do like puff baking and stuff like that, but I am just using an Eco Tools brush and what powder am I using? This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. So I was using religiously the Holly Boone H&B Cosmetics powder and I'm just trying to work through what's in my beauty cupboard and not buy new stuff. So this is why I've got this because this was a present ages and ages ago. This is okay, this is good. It's lasted a lot longer than the H&B Cosmetics one. I really loved that powder so I was quite liberal with it. This you just need a bit less of. I haven't noticed like any flashback or anything. Not that I take a huge amount of photos with flash at night. It's quite a matte look. It's a very finely milled powder. I don't really have much to write home about powders. It sits well on top of my current makeup which is I suppose all you can ask for. Just pat out any creases and then I do under my eyes. Not a huge amount. I'm doing less makeup I really like this little brush and a little bit of powder just to get under my eyes and do those sections because my under eyes get really really shiny eyebrows I'll try my best to do on camera but I use the revolution micro fine brow pencil in dark brown good value for money and a nice product the fucking construction my eyebrows are quite short oh my god that is so loud so I try, try stick to my natural shape Fill in my little scar. I don't do a lot here, but like, look at the difference. So I was shaving the tails off my eyebrows, you probably remember. And then I just had like a horrifying realization at the start of the year that where I'm liking not wearing any makeup, it just looks awful if I don't do my eyebrows because they were like this short. And I was doing that so I could draw a straighter shape on. So my eyebrows, as you can see, are quite really naturally arched. So I'm trying to stick and work with the natural arch without plucking too much of my eyebrows because my tail actually grows like all the way down here, but not in a neat way, like it spreads quite a lot. So I'm trying to keep my natural shape with as little maintenance as possible um, and keep it as natural as possible. Obviously this isn't very natural, but you get what I'm trying to say. I actually really like my eyebrows on the thinner side. My eyebrows just about two months ago were like really cunty. I really liked them. So I'm gonna go a bit thinner again soon. Eyelashes, eyelashes, eyelashes. So I'm gonna probably have to zoom you in even more for this. I've been getting a lash lift for like most of the year. Love it. Right now it doesn't look like a huge amount. I'm due another one in two weeks, three weeks. But you can see I have got some poking up here 
and they do look nice. Usually I have a very straight downwards facing lash, so quite similar to a lot of Asian lashes, so quite short, quite fine, but a lot of them, and they poke downwards. I've really struggled to find an Asian lash tech um, to do lash lifts in Brighton, but if you know any, let me know. If not, I absolutely do love my lash tech, Lauren. She's great, I've been going to her for a few years now. I would never ever wear mascara before getting my lashes lifted because it just didn't do anything for them. I did have a MAC lash curler, which was great, but my eyelashes are so short that it would curl all of these bits and then leave these bits straight. So this is such a long winded story. So I got this, um, which is the MAC Demi Lash Curler. MAC Lash Curlers are really, they are worth the money, this is 16 pounds, but I use it every single day and it's for doing sections of your lashes. So if you have maybe an eye shape that doesn't fit in a traditional lash curler or your lashes are too short like mine, get this. Be very, very careful. It's very easy to go very hard and like pull out a clump of your lashes. All the bad reviews are from people using it wrong, I'm sure. I'm gonna zoom you in even further. Okay, that was really hard to record, so I'm gonna try better on the next eye, but look at the difference. I'll just do this a lot of days without wearing any mascara. I think it looks so nice. I'll try show you on this eye. I just do, oh, see, look, it's unfocusing. I just do like a pulse on the end, and then you move onto the next section. It helps to get a little bit of the previous section in and it blends it. This is my problem eye to be fair, the lashes on this eye like never behave. Right, I'm back with both eyelashes curled. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see what the effect is. So I have a gap which is really sad here from, I've had this since I was a child. I think I obviously pulled some eyelashes out and they've just never grown back. The gap is getting slightly better with lash serum, but there's been like no new growth. There's just been lashes around it. So you can kind of blend. I still struggle to get these end lashes in the curler, but it's better than nothing. Use Maybelline Sky High. Um, I was holding on to the same crusty, dusty tube of this for so, 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 so long. Uh, and then I got a new tube and it was too wet. So I like was pulling out loads of product onto tissue paper. I prefer it when it's a bit dry. So I like pump it loads and now it's like nearly empty and I haven't had it that long, which felt a bit wasteful, but I prefer my mascara to be a little bit on the drier side. The too wetness of it was like, clumping all my eyelashes together really badly. I've only really just learned how to do mascara in like the last year or so after not being able to do it very well at all because I didn't bother. So I've only really just learned to do mascara in the last year or so um, because I never wore it before. I always just wore false lashes because I didn't like my eyelashes. So if this is a bit uh, rudimentary or entry level, please forgive me. So tops, just run it through just so the curl doesn't get weighed down. Then I start running it through the mid lengths. I usually wipe off a little bit of excess product. Ugly, crusty, spooly, and brush it through. Doesn't matter if it gets on my eyelids. I need a lash separator. I begrudge buying one. If you recommend it, let me know and it will only take me that to go get one. Same on the other eye. These lashes misbehave a lot. I don't like it as much. I'm gonna go do this off camera quickly. There you go, it's not great. I've done a second coating, a very, very light one. I don't always go back in for one. It just depends on what the lash gods are saying that day. Um, if I've got a little bit of time, I sometimes work a little bit of brown shadow just into like my lash line in the root because like I said, my lashes are quite thin and it gets very sparse on the bottom. Like you can see pink lash line poking through and I don't always like that. Uh, I'm just gonna get a little bit of eye makeup remover on a cotton bud and just take off the mess above my lids. On a day to day, I don't do anything else with my eyes. Um, I might do like a little bit of highlight underneath. I don't like bottom mascara. I might do like a little bit of shadow, but today we're going every day. I'm going slow because we're on camera, but I can do this. I can nail this in half an hour. I get to introduce you to my favorite blusher. This is the number seven blusher in the shade Honey. I need to clean this up because it's got a lot of oil on it. A little bit of sellotape usually does the trick if you feel like you're not getting any color payoff on the oily bits. Very unsuspecting blush combo, but perfect for summer if you like a beige blush. I always get so many compliments on this. It's like the perfect suntan, sunburn blush. I know it doesn't look like much, but believe me, it really pulls the whole thing together. I really want to try the shade Copper Tone by MAC. I don't think they do a travel miniature of it anymore though, and I don't need any more blushes because that is one thing I do buy in excess. A little bit across the nose, a little bit across the forehead. This is one of those ones you really can't overdo it as well. If you've got really, really pale skin and you want something that feels very blushy, bronzy, but not like 
pigmented bright pop of like orange or pink try this i used to wear this with a peach blush underneath and it was very very subtle it looked very kind of like orangey tonal on my face but with a pink underneath oh it's just beautiful time for one of the best parts which is my freckles i do draw on my freckles don't kill me i go over my own moles and then i just liberally apply everywhere i used to do freckles with henna it works really well uh especially if you're kind of like in a no makeup vibe but you really do just have to sit around for five hours like you can't go out or anything um because i live with the people like they do just look really wild on your face and also i'm where i'm using quite a lot of actives and retinol at the moment they're not lasting me very long they're lasting me like less than a week especially when i wear makeup over the top so freckles aren't perfect people have them everywhere i think this just makes my makeup look a lot more natural i like concentrating them on the nose i do like freck the product freck if anyone's heard of it but it's just expensive i use this every day so i should just buy it because it's worth the money i just think if it ain't broke although freck does last a lot longer to be honest i do that with my eyebrow pencil and then i go in with a brown felt tip liner this is a brand new one so it's like really crazy dark at the moment so you have to be quite gentle these last all day but they look a bit too perfect sometimes just dab them in with my finger you can always buff these away with a beauty blender i like adding the two-tone in because freckles are never just one color they do look a bit intense when you first do them great way of covering up spots too i'm thinking about getting these cosmetically tattooed on not as much as i have now but i'm wondering if i'll regret it when i'm older because i feel like it's such a thing the turntables turn don't they when you're younger and it's like a real sign of youth and it looks very natural and gorgeous to be very freckly obviously a lot of people with freckles don't want their freckles so i completely understand that but then as you get older freckles and like spots on your face and blemishes you start wanting less of them because they kind of look like sun damage or you know it, it there's like a weird pivot isn't there where you all of a sudden want like really clear blemish free skin um so i'm a little bit worried about getting some tattooed on i found a really good cosmetic tattooist in brighton and she's got loads of healed results as well so they look amazing i just think people will think i'm insane for getting freckles tattooed on but maybe i just wouldn't tell anyone but how could i not tell you do you know what i mean I just don't know if i'm willing to open myself up to that kind of criticism it would make for great content though is this driving anyone else mad or is it just me unnecessary touch but i take a teeny bit of bronzer and just go along the bottom of my nose setting spray time i use the revolution super fix super hold misting spray in a can this is really good i really like it if you want your look to stay like super on while this is a little bit damp not as wet as this but just in a few minutes repowder your face and that shit stays lip time i like to just swirl my foundation brush over my lips a little bit i know we don't like foundation lips but i don't mind it rimmel cappuccino it's impossible to get for so long it's cool toned it kind of simulates my natural lip almost in that it doesn't look bad if i'm just wearing this and like vaseline and then i am on the dregs the actual fucking dregs of my clinique black honey you can't see it but i get it out with a lip brush and i put that shit on because it looks so good i should be getting a new one soon I usually do a bit of Vaseline and a little bit of gloss. Um, these are my two favourite glosses at the moment. I'm really torn between which one to use. This is the Fenty Gloss Bomb Ice in the shade Cold Hearted. And this is Refi Lip Gloss in Clear. I love the applicator on this. It's really nice. I mean, it's disgusting looking. It's like metal. It's really cold. I think I'm going to do the Fenty. This lip gloss is a little smidge stickier than the Refi, but it's a much more beautiful gloss on camera, I think. Although the Refi is like the truest, clear, slick, shiny gloss ever. I always get loads and loads of compliments when I film TikToks or videos or YouTube or Instagram or whatever with any Fenty gloss on my face. Shall we zoom out for the final product? So this is my finished everyday kind of makeup look that I'm doing at the moment. Updated all of the products, I hope you enjoyed it. I should have filmed it here actually, this lighting's much better, oh well. Little bit of a different type of video from me today. Let me know what you think, I hope you enjoyed it. I know my upload schedule has been a little bit tricky at the moment, so thank you to everyone for bearing with me. It usually is Wednesdays and Sundays, but at the moment, this week, I'm just uploading as and when I can. I've been having like a little bit of a digital detox, unintentionally, mind you. 
I'll put all the products in the description box and all my socials too. I'd love to know what you thought of today's video. If you enjoyed your time here, it'd be great if you leave a little like, a subscribe or a comment, and I will see you on the next upload.